So welcome tonight to the meeting of the November 17th meeting of the Housing Steering Committee. And uh, Allison is not here tonight, so I'm gonna be calling roll for you. Uh, Councilmember Member Har I'm here. Council Member Paulson. Here. Planning Commissioner Wagstaff. Here. And Daniel Kunzler. Here. You're all present. And the first item on the agenda is approval of minutes from the November 10th meeting. Would anyone like to make a motion to approve those? I'll, I'll move to approve the minutes. Thank you. I'll second. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, I should probably abstain since I was not at the meeting. Okay, so that three ayes, I believe, uh, Wagstaff, Paulson, and Harold. So the motion carries. And then the next item on the agenda, or the only item on the agenda really is um, to receive a presentation on the draft housing element and opportunities for public comment on the draft. Andy, our consultant is trying to get in this meeting and having issues and that could be on our end with our website problems. But let me show share a couple of um, slides I prepared on the housing element. We um, <clears throat> received the draft housing element today and have released it for public review. This is a 30 day public review period during which time we're gonna accept comments from anyone in the public and then we'll respond to them before another draft is released. Let me pull up my slides to tell you what we're planning to do for. Hopefully you're seeing my screen. Uh, so hard to tell which screen it's showing. Are you seeing the slide with the housing element? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, we did. So it's been posted to the Living in Larkspur website and there's a special page there that um, Andy will go over if he can um, get in this meeting and if not, I could pull it up too, um, where someone could actually go in to all the chapters and comment on various sections and chapters if they really wanna dive into it and have their comments um, be considered with respect to certain any portion of the housing element. And then also anyone could just email housing at emcplanning.com to comment. And those um, comments will all be collected by EMC. And then anyone could always email planning at cityoflarksburg.org too to submit comments. And we'll make sure that they all get into the, um, the pool of comments. And then we have a meeting of the housing steering committee scheduled for December 8th at 6 p.m. We have a Zoom link set up, um, but I know we had some discussion at the last meeting of possibly having that in person to do like a hybrid meeting. And so I've contacted, um, or I've asked Allison if we could, the city clerk, if we could set that up. Um, but I wanted to confirm with all of you, is that what you would prefer to have a, an in, once a hybrid meeting similar to a council meeting with um, the opportunity for people to be in public to comment as well as um, online? And what's the date on that? That would be on December 8th. So it sounds like you wouldn't be able to yeah, attend. Right. Um, if anyone has yeah, any Lisa, I... oh. Go Let ahead. me stop my share for a second. Oh, sorry. The attendee might be Andy trying here. Sorry, Andy, go ahead. Are you having trouble getting in the meeting? Yes, I got in. Yes. Oh, can I get, promote you? Here we go. I'll get you promoted. Thank you. All right. Um, I was just that you don't know how much of that you heard, but I was trying to see if they were interested in an in-person, a hybrid meeting on December 8th, as opposed to just our, our usual Zoom meetings. So um, if you could give us comments as to whether or not you're interested in doing that. Um, we could try to see if we could set that up. Um, at least just a clarification, uh, it's hybrid. Would it be like our council meeting yesterday? So yes. anyone who wants to attend would be on the dais and we'd have the same, you know, kind of, you know, camera and people in the chamber, people zooming, same format as yesterday. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that, that sounds great because it's flexible. I mean, I'll, I'll probably be there in person. 
Yeah, but that sounds fine. Yeah, I would probably be there in person also if I. Okay, so we'll see if we can um, set that up with Allison. If, if, we can, if she, I, I will need help with the technology. So if, um, on, we'll need her or someone else who knows how to keep everything moving along while we're there. And then Andy Flower, you could attend by Zoom or any of the, anyone else we want to have attend. Um, thank you. And so I'm just going to go back to um, Andy Flower with the EMC planning and you can go ahead. Um, I didn't get too far, just talking about how people could start commenting on the housing element. Great, great. Uh, so this is uh, this is the web page if you haven't had a chance to look at it yet. Oh, I'll get back to the since we've updated it just today. So we've um, we've listed there the 30 day period. Um, it technically ends on a Saturday, so we thought we'd carry it over to a Monday. And uh, and so people can just click the link here. And then what we've done is we've allowed for two different ways for people to share comments through the website. One of them is to be able to look section by section with each chapter. You see here that we've we've pasted in the material for each section. So that way somebody can be very deliberate and specific and it helps us on the back end when we're bringing our um, our way of, of responding to the comments that we hear. We can be very specific when we share it with the decision makers about what we heard and, and why we're suggesting any changes to the document as we go forward. The sections of the of the full plan that we don't have sectioned out like this are the appendices, and there is a lot of information within the appendices. Um, and before we get to that, I do want to direct you to um, chapter two. That's where we have our policies and programs and goals. And here you can see right in the beginning, there are the goals. So there's there's three major sort of tenets of this plan that we want to make sure that. Um, that you understand going into it to um, help guide your reading of it. And so one of them is, of course, the the policy action that we're proposing. So that, um, and so they all fit under this umbrella of the goals. So under the goals, we have the policies and then the meaningful actions or uh, we call them programs. So the implementation programs. So that's all within this section. If somebody instead wanted to just read the full document, we do have that available. Um, and for that, you just go back to the main page and you see we have a PDF of the full draft. And uh, likewise, we have a similar PDF for each of the individual chapters. Um, and if anybody is more comfortable sharing their comments via email, that's always an option as well. When people share their comments here, it does pop up right here. We'll automatically see that somebody has added a comment. Somebody can choose to, to remain anonymous. There, there is a request for your email and your screen name. The reason why the email is gathered because then you can get confirmation that your comment has been received and included. Um, but that in, in both cases, you can remain anonymous if you so desire. And of course, sending us an email is a way to certainly remain anonymous. All of the, um, we are required to include all comments that we receive in this 30 day cycle with our submittal to HCD for that final draft or that, for that initial draft for HCD to review for 90 days. So every, so there's no time more um, crucial for people to share their their advice. So getting back now to the appendices, you'll, you'll see here in, in chapter four first, uh, we do have an overview of vacant and available sites. But for folks who really want to get in and understand those sites, that's in the appendix and, and it's specifically in appendix D. And so as I mentioned, we don't have that separated out piece by piece because there are so many graphics and tables and figures. And so within this, you'll recognize um, the areas that we've talked about in a few of our meetings here. So we've got the key inventory map that has all of the sites on a single map. And then for each individual sort of neighborhood area, we've, we've got that labeled and that corresponds with each of the descriptions and with an aerial with street names as well to help people get more familiarized with 
with what the sites are. At the very end of this appendix, we do have a table. And, um, and this is the beginning of the table that will eventually be incorporated into the table that gets submitted to HCD. It's, it's going to be a lot more in, in, uh, intricate and involved. There's a few more columns that we add and we wanna make sure to get through this comment period before we integrate all of this information into that HCD table. But we are starting off with um, an intention for the, the different income capacities for each of the sites. And this is a, a middle ground density. I won't get into the weeds too much about this and maybe on the 8th, we'll, we'll talk more about it if that's desired. And uh, what that means is we've, there's a, um, a minimum and a maximum and, um, and then this is the middle ground between the two densities. So that's, that's the main points that I wanted to get across with, with the site. Um, but I'll, I'll pause here and see if there's any questions or any, um, anything that you'd like me to share as well. I, I just have a, a procedural question. Uh, sure. Because there's a 32, the 30 day window for comment. Right. Um, does that preclude you or you know anyone else on this committee uh, from making any further amendments to the document within the 30 day period? No, certainly not. Other amendments can be made as well. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was gonna. I was gonna say, um, Andy. I, I think this is. Uh, you know, I actually skimmed and copied out the entire document. You know, pages, and I. Um, you know, I particularly wanted to call attention to a few of the sections, and I'm hoping. You know, through this meeting, I have a feeling my comments are going to be in two categories. You know, one is how do we get this out to the public? Because, right. you know, I think that was really how I ended last time, like my joke about show me the baby. You know, I, I think this is kind of the baby. Yeah. <laughs> so um, hopefully it's cute. But, um, you know, I think the uh, section two with the goals, you know, I actually put every every policy into a spreadsheet and started looking at them. And I, I think, for example, we're really discussing rent control right now. So there were plenty about affordability. Um, and and I, I just wanted to call out that I thought it was pretty clear. And, and you know, there are a lot of things for us to consider, probably too much for the public. Uh, and, um, and then I, I think the uh, section four, um, you know, particularly the, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the map of, of all the, the you know, the, um, Gosh, sorry, I'm getting, I'm, I'm sort of paging through my notes here, but uh, the section that has the site map, I, I forget the exact page number. Um, I think it's uh, 234, you know, the available sites is, is, I think that should be on the cover of whatever, because that really is like, here's where we're gonna, where we think we might build. And there were some sites there that I have real questions about, <clears throat> you know, after all we've said. And then finally the appendices, um, you know, the, the appendix E was pretty helpful to me. So, you know, reviewing the prior housing element, what worked, what didn't work. I mean, I think we basically said we did our best and we're in a new era now, but it does, it does sort of show, you know, where policy has been in the last cycle, 2015 to 2023. So I thought that was very useful. And then uh, what I really liked was the Appendix F, the list of contacted organizations. And I, I'm assuming it's a little bit of show and tell, hey, HCD, we're, you know, trying to be, you know, engage everybody. And, you know, there was the, the workshop you held and, you know, Elisa's social media and everything. And I, I, you know, I actually wrote down a lot of the comments which echo what's coming up in council. So, um, you know, all in all, I think the doc's super useful, but I kind of come back to my bucket one, which is, you know, how do we get this out to the public? You know, for this meeting, I'll have plenty of, you know, questions which are, you know, not necessarily helping the public, <laughs> but, you know, I just, I wanna, I wanna keep emphasizing, you know, maybe through Shannon, through Dan, uh, I, I, you know, I have my own email list for elections. I mean, I could, you know, go out there and, you know, personalize it like in your neighborhood, you know, North Magnolia, or hey, all of you living on Via Casitas, you know, there's a lot that might change there. And, you know, I want to do what's appropriate. But I, you know, I've talked to, the, to Brock about this. I've talked to Kevin about this. You know, I just think the community is not really noticing a very important 
piece of policy. So anyway, that was long winded, but I just I wanted to get that all out there. Well, that's very much aligned with uh, where we're headed next. So the, a lot of today's meeting is how can we help serve you in in that outreach? One of the things we've got on on our plate is a postcard that we're designing right now. We should have it out by Monday and then that can get. Um, let's see, I think I heard back from the printer today. I believe it's the 30th that that might go out. Yeah, that was a, so, that was a I'm hoping that maybe we could find someone to send it out sooner than that. A little it's hard with the holidays. Yeah. Um, do you want me to pull up my slide on on um outreach? Yeah, that would be perfect. Yes. All perfect right, time. Sure. But we heard your comment last time Gabe about wanting to have a one page explainer for the odds and and that that's a good idea also for the housing element. And and so we've we've got a couple of ideas for how to do that. One would be to really help direct people how to to get to the web pages and then what those web pages represent. Um, so are so, you seeing? Hopefully, yeah. you're seeing my yes. screen. Okay, yes. good. Um, so the Shannon has already emailed, um, or sorry, um, EMC has already emailed the the people that have signed up at the Living in Larkspur list about the availability of the housing element and how they could comment and the two upcoming meetings, um, or sorry, tonight, and then the meeting in December. And then um, I'll be emailing all the people that submitted comments for the rent stabilization. I know we had about 50 people uh, um, make comments, but some of those were verbal. So the list isn't too long for that. Um, and then we will have the December 8th meeting, which will be some, we're trying to invite people to come and make comments. So hopefully that people will attend that to, to provide additional verbal comments. Shannon's gonna be uh, sending out a special edition of the city manager newsletter that should reach a large number of Larkspur residents. And then we'll also be posting something on Instagram and paying like $40 to get it a little bit higher on people's visibility. And then we'll post something on Nextdoor, which um, has a lot of subscribers, but not necessarily people that view the posts. And then, as Andy said, we can send out a postcard to property owners and tenants. And also we could send that postcard out to those groups that we outreached to before so that they actually have a, a, something more concrete to comment on. And then definitely a letter to all the property owners that are listed in the site's inventory. And we can broaden that to a buffer, um, maybe in the resident, or, um, I, we can buffer that those addresses too. So to make sure that the people that are adjacent to those sites um, learn that there's a site that's been listed near them. And then I'm willing to make any presentations to any people that are interested. Um, I was hoping that maybe the trailer uh, mobile home park residents might be interested in hearing about the housing element. And we could set up either special meetings by Zoom or, or in person if anyone's interested in talking to us about the housing element. And then I'm also willing to do some tabling too um, when I have free time on the weekends. Definitely, it's easy for me to go across the street to Larkspur, but it also might be a great opportunity during the shopping season to, or if Santa Claus is at Bon Air, to try to um, yes. get some crowds <clears throat> sitting in line. Santa Claus <laughs> so, will be at Bon Air. Yeah. So I hopefully we'll have those opportunities too. I haven't set any dates for that. One more thing to add, we, we do our, have our AFFH specialist, Lee Robinson, who has had some success recently with some inroads with, with groups within the region. And so they will also be um, sharing this information and hopefully encouraging folks, hopefully their encouragement will bring folks to the uh, December 8th meeting so that we'll have um, more robust diversity in our in our meeting. And, in the comments that we gather. Um, Andy, Elise, how many people are currently in our living in Larkspur list? That's a good question. I don't have my finger on that right now. I wasn't the one who um, sent that out, but I can I can get back to you, Gabe. We okay, made sure- so, I mean, did it all yeah. uh, Well, it's hard. We, we made sure that people wouldn't have to have to register in order to interact with our website. And so then it's okay. it's only voluntary. Um, so it's it's less than the number of people who actually interact with the website for sure. Thank you. You know, I, I'd like to make a sort of a general comment about the uh, about the the appendices uh, as as we go into this period of public outreach. 
there is a lot of information in there. Um, and you have the you know, there are two sides of the coin. One kind of coin, one side of the coin says, "Hey, you know, it's, it's you know TMI. You know, this is this is an overload." But the way I read it is that, oh my gosh, there's so much important and interesting information, and as people go through the housing element, um, it would be nice if there was some kind of a, an awareness portion of the outreach that says, "You know, look at your community, look at all of this data about your community, so you 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 have a sort of a deeper knowledge of it." And that will, you know, inform, you know, how you, um, how you receive this housing element. Um, so that that's the kind of thing that, because I I did read through it today. It says, my gosh, I mean, there's just so much um, uh, about this town, which is important and interesting. Thank you. That's that's wonderful. I I think we'll. Um share that enthusiasm and that perspective when we put our one pager together for, for you to bring out to the community Kurt, if you desire. Look, we know there's a lot of data here, but you know, you're, you should maybe you know, spend a little bit of time with it if you can. Andy, are, are we doing anything with I, the IJ? Shannon That's a good question. asked if, she, if we wanted to send something to the IJ and, we, and she, could, she can send something out to them to, to um, see if they'll cover it. Yeah, um, or, or or one of us could have our name on it too. It it doesn't really matter. Um, uh, might might be good to have a council member have have their name on it. I'm not necessarily okay. volunteering, but you know, any, any of us could do it, or all of us could do it. Quite honestly, we could all have our name on it. Um, people do read the IJ, um, and they'll read it throughout Marin County, not just Larkspur. Um, and there will be people outside of Larkspur who will have an interest in what we're doing with their housing elements. So I think it's fair to keep people uh, in the general community apprised of what we're up to. But I think that's actually a pretty effective way of informing people what we're doing um, to get it out in the, in the paper. And and other communities are also dealing with the same thing. So yeah, uh, I think that's a, a really good suggestion. And, and one other thought is, is I, I think it could be packaged in a way that has, um, you know, it's touching on issues that since I've been on the council have been in the IG mul multiple times. So um, Marin Park, Cinemax, Skylark, you know, these, these have been, I, I think, you know, I clipped the articles electronically. I think there may be seven or eight stories on just those three things. And, and this is essentially saying this is kind of a super story. It's like, you know, those were all reactions to public comment or, you know, you know, events of the time, but this is trying to address all of them. Yeah, um, this, this, is, this, this, is, this is a standalone kind of thing. It's, it's, it's not re reactive to issues that are coming up. It's something we really have to be proactive in telling people, this is something that we are doing. We have to do it. It's a matter of state law. We've worked very hard on it, but we need public input and it has to be a very direct not linked, not linked to other issues. I think it's. I think it would be a mistake to link it to other issues. This is a standalone piece for us to be complying with our obligations under state law, and people need to know that this is a critical document that people need to look at, and this is their one shot to do it. Right. I mean, I appreciate that, Kevin. But the one thing is, you know, I'm I'm struggling with this in fire safety. You know, our neighborhood response group drills a couple of Sundays ago were so anemic. You know, so the fact is we had a terrible fire season in 2020. We had, you know, we dodged the bullet in 2022 and almost nobody's putting up their okay signs and everyone was complaining. So I, I you know, while I agree it is a standalone issue, if we're talking about, you know, um, publicity or promotion, uh, you know, there's a fine line to tread. You know, we don't also don't want to get people up in arms about, you know, things that are just going to complicate the process, but to get genuine involvement. I mean, if I were to, you know, try to really with equanimity say, you know, why this is important. It's, you know, look, we've been dealing with affordability as a council. We've been dealing with, you know, closures like Cinemax. You know, we've been dealing with so many things and, and you know, the, and the risks of overdevelopment and you know, things like Wind Cup. I mean, th this is something, I just think the public needs a prodding without, you know, fear mongering. Like you know, hey, this this is no, we, really we, something we, that we don't we don't disagree great. with that. I think the the where we may disagree is um, the extent to which um, our outreach needs to really be focused on the housing element, why we're doing it, 
um, what it's about from our point of view and why it's important to you. And I would worry if, because um, we have just, we have really limited opportunities to do this kind of outreach. You know, for example, a Marin voice piece is limited to, I don't know, 600 words or something like that. So there's only so much you can say in that frame. Um, it's really important to get the message across. We have lots of opportunities to talk about other issues, um, but I really, really would encourage as much as possible a targeted approach, focusing the public's attention on the housing element. Agreed. Um, Andy, quick question. I mean, I, I, in the IJ, you know, I've seen, okay, Corte Corda Madera submitted, Fairfax, or I may not be getting the, the, the um, you know, exact towns right, but What's your experience? Because I think you were working with Fairfax as well. You know, what's your experience with involvement? Is anything helping, you know, get more engagement? That's a great question. I, I think there's a lot of um, engagement fatigue. We're, we're also, we're working with Belvedere and there's been a delayed response for involvement and engagement there. Uh, now that we're very close to, to bringing something forward to HCD, suddenly there's there's a whole lot of people who are are suddenly engaged. And we, we might have a similar situation here in Larkspur, but it, it'll be good for us to um, uh, to uh, welcome that with open arms as early in this 30-day process as possible so that people can feel um, like they can be part of the discussion. And I think it's, I think you're mentioning HCD is, is uh, I think, really important. It, 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 it should be understood by the public that we're not just doing this because we can or because we want to. We're doing it because we're under the gun and we have deadlines with a, with a state agency that have to be met or else we get into trouble. Um, that message has to get across to the public. If I, if I may, I, I just want to applaud you uh, in all of Marin County. I do want to say that um, you are leaders in your intellectually understanding that being part of a pro-housing community is in everybody's best interest, including those who may have, uh, I, I see you holding your finger up, Daniel. Do you yeah, want to? Yeah, I, I was, I was, yeah, I, I don't want to interrupt you, but I, Please. I almost, almost start to amplify that point. So if there were a way of communicating, not only, you know, what Kevin says, look, we have to do this, this is the law. And if we violate that law, we're going to be in trouble. I mean, that's, a, that's an extremely important point, probably maybe the most important point. But if it was also a way of communicating to the public that, hey, this is in your interest. Yes. This, there are benefits to you for being engaged in this process. Uh, so if there's a way yeah. that maybe conveys something like that, those, those are, those are, those, those two messages can work together. Yeah, um, they should. Yeah. Um, and, and I, and I, and I agree with it. I mean, it's, 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 it's two sides of the same coin. Um, it, it's, it's, it's important because as a community, we are under the gun. We do have legal obligations. We have to meet them and you have have to, as a community, help us do that. At the same time, this is your opportunity to take advantage of the process and promote the interests of our community in ways that will make the community better in the long term, regardless of our legal obligations today. Yeah, so we get that message or have that combined message out there to, you know, as a... You know, and, that, and that'll take about 600 words right there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so I'm curious... I'm curious, you know, as a as a you know exercise for the group, if we sent out a postcard, you know, what you know, five or ten words would we send to our neighbors and to other people that you think would get them interested? You know, I, I'm thinking, for example, you know, what do you want your neighborhood to look like in the 21st century in 2030 or something? I mean, you know, what what is actually something that's going to you know viscerally engage people? You know, in in a few words. I'm just curious what our, our, our core message is here, you know, for, for engagement purposes. You know, I don't think saying, hey, Larkspur has a deadline. They're like, yeah, you have a lot of deadlines. You know, it's like, that's not, that's your problem. That's why we elected you, you know, go do your work. No, not in, not in the context of a postcard. I understand, I understand that a postcard has to be short and pithy and a marketing piece. Uh, I was really talking about a longer piece that would be in the IJ, um, but I defer to sure. others who sure, have no, more no, experience no, on marketing big, than I do. I yeah, like your question, just, just as a five to 10 words. What what can that be? Yeah. Because I think the whole thing, you know, I, I you know, in general, I would imagine, uh, you know, a messaging um, should be unified and cogent. 
And, and, you know, if we're here, you know, for the first 15, 20 minutes of this meeting, trying to really get people involved, you know, how do we go out to the public, you know, in a unified voice? And, and I, I think the deadline message to me is a little bit secondary. The primary thing is, you know, and I'll be a little long-winded, but I mean, there've been so many debates about not doing any more development. And, you know, where are those people now? And I, I don't necessarily want them to naysay, but, you know, we're trying to direct this and say, this is a way to, you know, really transform our community in, in, a, in, in, you know, to meet needs that we haven't had before, you know, workforce housing, environment, pollution, um, you know, diversity, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, I mean, that's the long-winded version, but to me, that's not about saying, you know, we have to get something done by January, 2023 or whatever the date is. Yeah, I guess I kind of disagree with that. I think it's really important for the public to know that we are under a deadline because if they don't know that, then they'll think they have all the time in the world to get back to us. Um, we are under a deadline. We need their input within the framework of that deadline or else it's not going to be reflected. Um, so I, I really do think, I don't, and we can say it in different ways, I don't, and I don't, I'm not going to wordsmith right now, but I think it's very, very important for the public to understand that we are under a deadline. This has to go in. We are like every other community in the state of California. We have to do it. We don't have to necessarily talk about the penalties that we would face if we don't get it in and talk about all the enforcement consequences, even though that is relevant and it is real and it is a risk. But I think it's very important for the public to know that this is your time. And if you don't get it in so that we can make our document work within that time frame, it's it, you're not you're gonna you're gonna be ignored. And again, I, I'm not I'm not trying to write it right now. I'm just talking off the top of my head. I think it's very, very important for the public to understand that, that there is a deadline. This is the most impactful time for people to step up and share their comments, because every comment we receive will land in the hands of the HCD reviewer exactly. along along with our response to it. So that that is one way that we've sort of um, gotten the word out and engaged with more people by helping them know that um, you don't have to be in the majority view for your no, voice to have consequences. Yeah. And the state is, I mean, HCD is watching. I mean, I don't think it's a bad thing for people to know that HCD is watching. And we need to make sure that we are doing what we need to do in order to make sure that we have a successful process. So I'm, I'm really pretty strongly in favor of getting the message out that we are, I, I keep using the, we are under the gun. That's a little dramatic, but we are under, we are under a deadline and people need to take advantage of this opportunity now. It's a powerful time for people to share their voices. Yes. And we can make that clear in in our in our um, postcard and then restate that again at that December 8th meeting. Yep. You may have just done some of the work. So, so maybe, you know, one postcard thought is, um, you know, to integrate what was just said, uh, Larkspur will build 979 units. Uh, um, can you make this work for the community by December 17th or whatever the date is? <laughs> I mean, I, I do think the 979 is an eye raiser and that'll get engagement. And sure, saying it's you've got 30 days or else is, is good to motivate action. And the positive spin is like, this could really be a good thing. I mean, you know, if you look at it in a certain sense, you know, there are many, many um, issues that are, are, you know, growing and becoming more intractable and, you know, and, and housing inventory could solve a lot of them, including workforce, diversity, environment, transportation, et cetera. And, and is a postcard really the best way to do that? Um, you know, I was thinking about the election cycle that just took place and how many postcards you get in your mailbox. And does that, is, does that actually motivate people or is there a way to reach them verbally or or maybe the IJ is the way like Kevin says because um, somehow you have to get their attention and and that's really the puzzle I think the thing about multiple postcards platforms. in, in yeah multiple platforms I think is, is important the thing about postcards in the election cycle is that everybody in their pet 
dog was sending out a postcard. Some of them were glossier than bigger than others, and some of them were smaller and less glossy. But, uh, you know, if you're like me, you get those in the mail, you get 10 of them in a batch, and you toss them in the trash as soon as you can. I think this is a little bit different because we're not competing for the, we're not competing for attention um, uh, to take it away from, from other people that are trying to do the same thing. This is, this is the ball game for this exercise, not comparing candidates and different alternatives. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I don't worry so much about a postcard in this context. You can make it a holiday card. <laughs> if you could <laughs> with Santa Claus on it. Yeah. Merry, Merry Christmas. So Gabe, I did get a response from our um, our coworker who's over on the East Coast, but she she texted me first, so I thought it's fair to ask her this this time of night. So we had uh, twenty one people who uh, who have subscribed, who have said, "I I want to you know keep abreast of this information." So yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's great. Thanks for getting that. Yeah. So, so I mean, it just uh, you know, we, you know, kind of to finish the thoughts here. I think these, you know, what you presented at least looks great. You know, between Instagram, next door, postcards, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the the only thing I, I thought maybe you know the steering committee could do is is reflect a little bit on what we think may get us more engagement. So you know, I, I didn't think. I mean, the postcard was a you know a, a thought experiment. But you know, just to say, you know, what's the message if you're in an elevator? that might really raise, here. I'll get the person here. And, and it sounds, you know, from my perspective, I think whenever I've said we're building 979 units to neighbors or constituents, they're all like, what, you know, how are we gonna do that? And, you know, the fact that our report says we have roughly double that capacity, you know, 197% or whatever, I think is, is, is kind of mind blowing. And, you know, and so just to say that, you know, this is what we're gonna do, right? The deadline isn't about, complying with HCD, it's about the commitment to build 979 units. And I think that is gonna drive engagement. Um, so however we do that, I mean, you know, I, that's just my opinion. I, I, you know, other members here may, you know, I think, you know, I agree with you, Kevin, that, that the deadline is an important piece of it, but I'm, I'm thinking the deadline for what? You know, the deadline for the library grants? I mean, we have a lot of deadlines, but what's gonna bring people to talk to us? And I think it's them knowing that in their community, they could get something that looks like suburban blight. And that's usually what that number, you know, and, and many of the anti-housing people have thought. And so we just want to make sure we hear from everybody. And, and to me, that's a, a really yeah. good headline right there. Make it, make it, making it a little scary is not a bad thing. Yeah. Can, can you say more about suburban blight? I'm not familiar with that term. Well, I, <laughs> um, I, I mean, maybe more close to home. Um, I think the the development in Corte Madera, right on La or whatever Wind Cup is now called, um, Bell Gardens or Bell something, Bell Tam. Uh, I, I think there was an enormous amount of controversy around that, and and it, and I think even Rose Lane, you know, there there was a lot of a lot of people fought that hard. So you know, there is a a, a great you know part of our constituency that really you know has concerns about any additional development um and then you know much of our discussion here has been driven by the objective design standards like not only do we have these units but we need to you know go to ministerial controls so we don't want to see these long vertical spans um, i'm sorry long horizontal spans or, or really big heights like five stories or you know so so i mean all these things i, I think once you put it in front of a person you know in a term like you know you're you're truly craftsmen, you know, small community feel of Larkspur could change dramatically unless we get your input. I, I mean, I think that's a little bit of fear, but it's also a very, you know, real message because, you know, part of our job is to make sure people don't come back to us two years later and say, oh, you guys are not transparent or I didn't know. And, you know, I think that happens on issue after issue, but, you know, here's, you know, the, the, the you know, the, the message that, you know, maybe we can drive a little more engagement. But I mean, that being said, at least I think you've done an amazing job. Like you've been at Piper Park and I read most of the post that, you know, that workshop you held and everything you said is good. I just, I'm wondering if we can't, you know, sharpen the message a little bit or, you know, just kind of wake, you know, poke the bear a little more. <laughs> so. um, sending notices to, to people around that might, that might 
bring some more interest in if if we're telling them this specific site has been listed in the housing element here's information that i think that that's a doable um, mailing that could be more of a public notice type of mailing and that might stir up some interest and if it doesn't it's it'll be good to know that too so where we don't have concerns i think we'll say a lot if people are if they're if they're not coming out it may be because they're They've read the plan and they're okay with it. And the, right. the other piece too right. is that since we have the odds in process, uh, we could very well gain more sort of followers on, on that. Oh, good um, point. Yeah, right. because the, the first question people ask, but well, what will it look like? Okay, there'll be units there, but what will it look like? And so then that's our opportunity to say, well, join our steering committee meeting in January and we'll continue that conversation. And we hope you'll join that too. Yeah, maybe the, you could touch on both points. Um, where will it go and what will it look like? Mm -hmm. So you have the, maybe again, like, Kevin, I don't want to word it right here, um, but the encapsulation of what everybody said is okay. We have an obligation to build. You know, we have to. You know, we have to submit a plan for close to a thousand units. Larkspur, let's turn this to our advantage. So you've got, you know, the the obligation, the compliance side, and you have to say, okay, we got to do this, but we can, you know, we can we can get a benefit out of this. So help us determine. You know, help us help us achieve that do you know if there's any examples from uh the last period of of multi-housing units just um, that have been built in larkspur yeah or any place nearby or in well, san rafael has a lot san rafael has a lot number of them that aren't that aren't huge projects that are the scale that larkspur would see and then we did have the um the Magnolia project, I think that was in this cycle, the what the um, but it's only four units, it was scaled back um, right. behind the wine store. Um, we have a current project pending, which that that I it might may be at a hearing in January that'll that will stir up interest in this topic in, as well. Um, yeah, North Magnolia. Yeah, what else that one this period? Is that the one where we saw that we saw some uh, some initial sketches? Yes, yeah, you had a study yeah. session for initial design. So that that's really the largest project we have right now. Um, and, I, and I'm having a hard time thinking of that many other than the Magnolia project that have been built, which is one of the concerns we have <laughs> with, yes. with trying to develop. <laughs> well, that, that, yeah. last, that last project is kind of a critical one because that's a very difficult uh, piece of property to develop uh, because of the terrain. Uh, the, so, so if you can get that done, it sort of shows the potential for some of the other sites. I, I keep thinking about, and I don't know how many people have been on, I think it's on Miller, where there's that huge, huge retaining wall that's been there now for eight years or whatever it is. And uh, that's what we don't want to have happen. Yep. And then the site across the street is really nice. The, the there's a multifamily development like directly across the street from there that was built. Um, you know, it's probably been ten years now, maybe longer. yeah, a long time ago. But yeah. it's it turned out really nice, and it went actually was not controversial. It was everyone. I mean, I felt like it went through smoothly when it when that came through. So, are, are you referring to Miller in in Mill Valley? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that retain wall is something. <laughs> so um, we do have three people in the in our audience public <laughs> that um, if any of, of you want to make any comments, feel free to raise your hand and I can um, allow you to speak. While we're waiting for that, I do want to mention one more thing at our at our next meeting. One thing we'll have is um, a policy matrix that shows how what we've heard from the public has been carried through to our policy making. Um, so, uh, and, and then we'll also have something similar to what it sounds like you made for yourself, Gabe, which is just that, a matrix that shows all of the policies and programs, and then also lists whether they are um, 
also covering our requirements for becoming a pro-housing community for the transit-oriented community. And uh, let's see, the third one, oh, AFFH, of course. And, yeah. and, it, and hopefully, because people have been so interested in the um, rent stabilization topic that um, I would hope that all those same people would be interested in this too. So I'm wondering too, how, how we engage that, that group um, because this is exactly the process that they could be can be engaged in to make some um, yeah yeah that's, that's I mean that's worth giving some thought because I think the folks that are showing up for those meetings the rent stabilization meetings they're really focused on rent stabilization they're really focused on their immediate needs and I don't know that um, talking about our long term plans for housing is going to really do a lot to help them address those concerns but it's not, it's not i'm not saying it's not relevant i'm just saying um you know they want to they want to be able to pay less on their rent next month i i think it is pretty remarkable that you know we've been having these meetings and there have been so few people that have shown up to speak uh besides ourselves um and i I don't I don't know if there's anybody in the audience who's going to speak tonight. Uh, and, and speaking of speaking, as I mentioned to Elise, I've got it. It's it's about um, almost five of and mm -hmm. I've got to switch off to another meeting starting at seven o'clock. So um, unless there's anything you want, anybody wants to say that requires my attention at this point, I'm going to jump in a minute. Okay. And Andy, do you want to go over what we would like the members to do before the next meeting? Obviously. Read that the document. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, and uh, and share your comments. Yeah, Excuse so me. if you could share your comments, you could email them to me. Um, but we're also we would like to get your comments so that we can incorporate them into the next draft. So things that you would like more information on, or um, any any anything, things that you have a concern about, or policies that you think should be considered more. Um, we just would love to get all as much feedback from you too, since you are the ones that are showing up to each of these meetings and are engaged in this process. Well, can I, can I mention two things that, that I wouldn't say popped out, but two things that, um, um, that sparked my attention. Um, it's actually two things that were not, not mentioned. One of them is um, insurance. Um, I don't know how aware you all are of um, insurance companies trying to draw back from California and actually, you know, I wouldn't want to be in Florida right now, uh, trying to get, you know, trying to get insurance. And since we're, we're talking about building out, building out areas in an environment where, you know, insurance companies are increasingly skittish, uh, if there should be any kind of mention of how the community might, you know, protect itself essentially against um, insurance companies withdrawing um, or, you know, charging, uh, charging exorbitant rates. Um, Thank you, that's great. Uh, you know, I'll, you know, I can maybe offline, you know, there, there are a couple of culprits I could I can name, but I won't. Um, and the other thing is that in the, you know, one thing that really stood out in the appendices was sort of this, uh, this sort of this huge disparity uh, in the sort of the, the, the housing options uh, on one end of the income spectrum, the housing options on the other end of the income spectrum. Um, and how difficult what what that told me is how difficult it is for uh, for people who are not current or even long time homeowners to actually build equity and and you know as we all know uh, housing is a, the, the number one way for uh, people of modest modest income to you know to build some equity over the course of their lives. Um, so it, it came to my attention there's something called a limited equity housing cooperative. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with those. Uh, they're kind of like, you know, privately held REITs for lower income people. So I don't know if over time that might be an option uh, for, you know, people who might be renting in a, uh, in a, in a multifamily, uh, in a multifamily structure uh, that might want to go, uh, that might want to go, um, you know, go co-op as they used to say in New York. Um Dan, this is Kevin. Uh, I've got to sign off now, but uh, you're mentioning uh, LEHCs is um, uh, strikes a chord with me. 
because I'm working with the Golden Gate Village Resident Council wow. now. Yeah. And like that is the model, that is the that is the model that we're encouraging with the Marin Housing Authority, even though they are pushing back hard on that. Yeah, so I, I'd be happy to give you some background on that process offline at another time. And, and so I, 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 I gotta I gotta take off now, folks. I'll I'll talk to you all later. Good night, Kevin. Thank right. you. Something, something like that appropriate. Yeah, that's a great idea. That is um that is something that's it keeps popping up in newspaper articles too and places around the Bay Area with tenants um doing just that to in order to preserve their affordable housing. So yeah. So those are just a couple of sort of topical things that that uh I was just, that sort of came to mind as I was going through the document. I think I even heard something about a new law that allows for density bonus for those kinds of housings. Well, possible. I, mean, I, I wanted to kind of piggy, piggyback off, you know, Dan, and you know, since I, I did try to both talk, I think what you're talking about would fit into goal three. So, you know, when we're in, um, you know, chapter two or SACU, goal three is provide new affordable and other special needs housing. Um, and and I, I, I thought there were so many things here, and I don't know if this is the time, but you guys said you wanted some comment. Maybe I'll just sure. try we and have... 60 seconds. <laughs> Happy to take comments. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, because I, I really, I think, you know, we, I was, I thought it was really important to start with the promotion, you know, because it's more about the public, you know, we're appointed elected, you know, I'm going to do my homework, you know, I'm, you know, give you my analysis, but that's really going to give us, you know, what, what we need in a sense with public engagement. But anyway, um, yeah, goal number three, um, there were some really interesting things. So, you know, policy H3.13 um, uh, is funding for affordable housing. I, I was hoping we could drill down into that a little bit more. I mean, I'm I'm partly bringing this up because I disagree with Kevin uh, a bit about you know um, you know what you said we could get the rent stabilization people. I mean, the the talk that you did, Elise, or the workshop that you did um, on on the tennis fo tenant focus group on August 24th was mostly Skylark people anyway. And you know, Kevin Carroll is now on the council, and he's a big mobile home guy. I mean, I've worked with him for two years on mobile homes, you know, and he was just a, an advocate. So I, I know that there's a lot of interest there. And I actually, you know, if I can just, you know, look at one more community we haven't discussed, I'm a little bit concerned about um, the map that we've drawn up for site 02A in Greenbrae. So that is actually the, um, the senior housing there. It's the, um, uh, I forget the, the exact name of it, Tamil Pius. Yeah, and I, I drove up there last weekend and I, I think I, I just want to be careful that we don't get another Skylark, you know, that that somehow this place, which has a lot of seniors, you know, suddenly becomes, you know, it's sold or, or gone to another developer. Or I, I'm not sure what the intentions of the ownership, if they registered with living in Marksburg. But I mean, to me, that's a, a community that requires a certain amount of attention, at least from from the outset. But, you know, sort of back to the point, I'm, I think that the the goal number three has so many pieces to it, and I kind of put them in three buckets. You know, some are the Band-Aid, which I call rent control or rent stabilization. Some are the, you know, just give them a shot of, you know, vitamins or something, which is the subsidies and, and you know, like the funding for affordable housing. And then there's the kind of slow and long-term thing is, can we meet arena numbers and actually provide more workforce housing and all that? And that could take, you know, eight or 10 years. And in that time, you know, all these people are going to be displaced. So, you know, while I'm sitting on the rent stabilization ad hoc and I'm sitting on this, I'm, I'm just trying to think more comprehensively, you know, what's going to make affordability uh, a reality in Larkspur. And, and it seems like your goal three has so much stuff. I'm wondering realistically what to prioritize or how to hit the ground running. I mean, is there a lot of great things for HCD to read, but, you know, which would we actually pursue? Mm, that's good. That's really good comment. One of the things our team is putting together is a Gantt chart because uh, we know that HCD is looking for milestones and metrics. And so mm -hmm. we we want to empower you as decision makers and, and staff to um, to have a to have an overall glance, a, a check on where we're writing those priorities and, and um, help us get it right, I guess. Yeah, and, and elimination of things is always possible too, um, so that you could really focus on the, the goals and um, projects that are 
the most important um, and not get it watered down by just a tremendous amount of policies and programs. Well, that sense. Yeah. yeah. There was one other thing um, that came out. It was actually a, it was actually formulated as a new policy, which was to you know, discourage um, short term uh, short term rental. <clears throat> Uh, rentals under 30 days are are currently um, contrary to municipal law um, in any event. Um, and I would be the last one to want to you know see this place get Airbnb out. Um, however, there's another goal in the housing element, which is to make sure that people that as you know they might fall on um, further limitations to their income that they don't get forced out of the city for economic reasons. So if you put those two things together, um, I'm just wondering if there is some kind, I wouldn't even call it middle ground, but again, I think the idea of discouraging things like Airbnb is in fact good policy and I agree with it. But there are situations where um, the ability for someone to actually um, host um, Airbnb um might actually enable them to stay in their homes exactly so if there were if there were and, the, and particularly since uh, you know as the the appendices point out that women would be the most vulnerable to being you know being displaced uh later you know later in life could be be through um you know a death of a spouse or 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 divorce or something like that so if there were a way to you know to formulate a policy that says well in order not to uh, in order to actually protect people that might be in that situation, if there was a way to say, well, if you remain in your home while receiving, uh, let's say, an Airbnb style guest, that might be permissible. What we don't want would be absentee um, absentee property owners that you know that basically run hotels. Um, we definitely don't want that. And, and and we've seen that happen in Southern California, the entire communities, which completely Airbnb out. You know, Newport Beach completely Airbnb out along the beach. Uh Venice, one, I think it's one third of the properties or something like that, or Airbnbs. Um here, here in Kauai, uh, every other house has yeah. a sign out in front of it. Airbnb <laughs> or VRBO. So we definitely don't want to see anything close to that. In, in and I, I agree with it. But is there should be actually looking at all the goals and make sure nothing stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, I guess what and one thought that crossed my mind was that we have about a dozen that have, a dozen ADUs that are being used as short-term rentals. That's a dozen units that are off the market for people to rent, and those twelve or those twelve ADUs or more, if we were to open it up, could also be rented on a month monthly basis to people. So it's not as if you're saying you can't have income to help support yourself. Um, ADUs can be a good source of income for residents when you see the prices that they're renting for. Yeah. So there, it, it, but I think also the short-term rental, I know the city council's already expressed interest in considering allowing them. And so maybe we need to revise that policy so that it's still something that's up for discussion. A little bit of subtlety in there, that, that, that's, that, that's all. Uh, but, but again, the, you know, the, the overarching theme of, hey, we don't want this in our town, I, I, I you know, I I agree with that. I, I believe New York City enacted something similar to a, a little bit of what you're suggesting that the you can only rent a room in your house. You can't right. have your and whole you space must, rented, must be, and you must be present. You can't leave exactly. So right, from, you know, roasting right. in quarters like that in the front yard. Yeah, um, Andy, I want to kind of go back to your point and and maybe um, Elise make a request. So the Gantt chart thing. Um, you know, I, just to toss an idea out there. I mean, I, I do think that, you know, affordability has different time scales, you know, for, for project implementation. So, you know, building is just going to take very long. And, you know, as I look through all the programs in goal three, um, you know, I'm wondering, Elise, like, you know, um, H3E is waived development fees. Um, and then the uh, H3K is update affordable housing trust fund ordinance. Um, and then uh, H3B is resale or rent controls. So they, for example, to me are something we could do on December 7th, you know, in principle, right? These are ordinances. So, so I'm wondering if you could possibly provide it, you know, I don't know if, if you have the bandwidth now or if we need to go follow another, you know, I've always told Dan, I'm never gonna give anything to Elise without going through you. But I, I just think that, 
you know, my, you know, duty, I think, as a council member is to, you know, see the big picture for affordability. And I'm wondering if we can stop the bleeding with some of these pieces quickly, you know, even, even though this thing isn't due for a while, and then, you know, go to the intermediate range, which, which may be, um, you know, uh, I don't know, priority processing is H34. Maybe that takes some time for staff to formulate that. But, you know, at the end of the day, I, I think we're, you know, we're gonna have to wait a long time for, you know, supply to meet demand. And in the meantime, you know, to avoid all the fixed income people and all the people who've complained, you know, we could maybe, um, you know, stage our Gantt chart and time the programs, you know, in a way that, that doesn't burden staff and, and has the maximum policy benefit. That's great. And then we are also, Andy and I are also waiting to see what happens with the meetings of the ad hoc committees that the council is holding right now, because whatever comes out of that will probably be those top priorities too. Um, so, so we can still add more when we know if there's any direction that the council takes for, for those when, in do response you think, to those committees. Do you think Catherine and Scott on the subsidy committee are aware of, you know, like some of the stuff I rattled off here, like, um, you know, the, the uh, affordable housing trust fund ordinance. That to me sounds like it's in their wheelhouse. You know, do they know about some of these things? Um, I, so yeah, that particular one, well, I mean, one of the things we have an affordable housing trust fund, one of the ordinances that we're looking at is um, right, getting, it would be like impact fees on development. The problem is we don't have a lot of development. So as we get development, there might be impact fees, but right now, even if we adopted that ordinance, it wouldn't, we'd be doing a lot of work and it wouldn't result in a lot of income into the housing fund. So, um, but, I, but I'm happy to reach out to those council members that aren't on this with if, whatever way we could do that without violating the Brown Act, just to um, make sure that they have a copy of the housing element. Actually, we could give them all copies of the housing element and the planning commission, because with such a long document, it's gonna be read at some point. So it might be good for everyone to be familiar with it. So um, yeah, it's not such a, but maybe, a big maybe, read. Maybe, when... an maybe an additional request. I mean, Kevin and I should know this thing anyway, but for, you know, I know Catherine and Scott, um, they do less housing stuff, you know, for them to be able to refer to, you know, I wrote down all the page numbers here, but you know, anything that has to do with subsidies, because you know, what we decided as a council was, you know, I, I think it's kind of the, you know, three stage approach. Like, you know, if we need to stop the bleeding, it's gonna be a rental cap and, you know, just cost for eviction and, you know, and, and, and some, some calibration of AB 1482. Um, but, but on the other hand, there's section eight. And right now, if you're in Larkspur, you know, good luck, you know, wait in line, you're not getting section eight housing. So I think, you know, there are ways where we can, you know, try to do what Skylark is doing with their housing fund. They're getting $300 a month discounts to over 20 tenants there. You know, why can't we as the city, you know, if we're looking at the administration for rental control, strict rental control is in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Why can't we think of a way of helping out Serenity and Bonaire and and you know Skylark. So so anyway, that's you know that's just a way to say what I think they're working on and anything in this housing element and at least five or ten things you know popped out to me. Anything that they you know can see, I think will just create better coordination. It's great. Um, even even promoting that program to other home property owners might be a good program. So. Um, the model that it, obviously you might come up with something better with your ad hoc committees, but but if at the least we could um, at least inform other property owners of what Skylark is doing, because maybe they could model the same programs at their complexes. That would be wonderful. I, I did that with Andrea Schultz, you know, who owns Bon Air, and you know they they were worried. You know, I mean, there there's some legal constraints. You can't, you know, you have to do it in a tricky way. Like I'm giving you a discount. You're still being charged 2,500, but I'm gonna take off 300, so it's 2,200. But whatever it is, I, I think property owners, if they knew that they could be facing rent control and you know possible you know reductions in their asset value, they're 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 gonna maybe be a little more creative on the subsidy side. I mean, it's the kind of you know carrot and stick you know that we were hoping to create for you know for affordability here. And unfortunately, you know the housing element. And, you know, I think Kevin said this, like, this is about, you know, a document. I'm like, no, I think they're all tied together. 
because you know the house government is explicitly saying we, we need to work on affordability and it's not just the arena numbers. This is such an inspiring team to work with. I really appreciate all that you're bringing to this to this process. Well, well thank you. you. What's your homework for the next meeting? Well, we're going to be providing you a, a couple of um, matrices that that help guide your um, your conversation and your understanding. Uh, but besides that, though, we just really would like to see um, some comments uh, uh, similar to what we've heard tonight, but in writing, that would be super helpful. And any ideas you might have about the way that you'd like us to present the information or by what priority, what you would, um, that, that elevator pitch idea that I heard earlier, what do you think rises to the top for, for those who would maybe step into the meeting and would be first introduced to this whole housing element process, uh, provided our AFFH outreach maybe is fruitful in this next round, and maybe we have some people who are new to the process, what could, um, what could help through this document help engage them and uh, help them want to stay involved and, and share their ideas and feel comfortable with the microphone. But Elise, please add. So yeah, just reading the comment or reading the document and comments would be great um, during this period. So we have a we have some time to do that, which is good, hopefully, over the holidays. So so you guys um, want us to go on to the markupable site and and like I mean I can just paste all the stuff I all my notes into there. Yeah, not necessarily. You could just email them. That would be fine. It's up to I mean, you. If you it's... want to, if you want to do it on that site, would that be? I mean, that would be. Seems like that would be a good way to do it for the housing element, and everyone else would. Have, I mean, everyone else can see those comments, so it might be. It might be nice to see them on that website, but you certainly don't have to do it through there. People are often <laughs> nervous about being the first to add a comment, so if they see. Um, some people go straight to the comments before they read sort of the meat of a of a document like this. So being able to read your comments first could help give them a lens. It, my only which... worry is the Brown Act, because if if others start to comment, <laughs> it become a yeah. serial meeting. Um, so you might want to be careful about that. Um, just give that some thought yeah, me... before commenting. Yeah, I'll ask Guy. I'll, 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 that's a good you know, idea. That's a, that's a really good point. Um, yeah, we've we've checked I, in with attorneys at different jurisdictions, and they each give us different advice. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think what would be fair is anything that I've said in council, you know, uh, so I could also report out on December 7th on, you know, the, the big picture and then enter those comments. But I think what I will do, um, Andy and Elise, is you know, I, I, like I said, I, I think you guys, you know, did a really good job for, for my, I mean, those appendices were super uh, dense and, you know, information rich. And so I, I just, you know, tried to parse out, you know, in, in a simplistic, you know, I've, I've got the, these, you know, basic things like, how do we get the public engaged? And, you know, how do we time our policy efforts for maximum impact? And, and so that would be the gist of what I sent to you. You know, so, I, and it's all kind of, I mean, you know, it requires a lot more thought and discussion, but, you know, just if you're looking for, you know, one person's perspective, you know, I've already given it in this meeting. I, I do think that we need to immediately do the affordability things that are ordinances and, you know, that we can deliberate and, and, you know, and get together and then, you know, kind of look at what's interim um, and then, you know, and the long-term stuff. And then for the public, I do think the message is, you know, the things that get a visceral response are you're going to have about a thousand units added to your development. Um, they're going to be multifamily and they could be big and wide and ugly. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say that. Um, and, uh, and this is also, you know, a chance to really solve multiple problems. And, you know, Dan, you were talking about insurance. If you look at the map, the only two properties I'm worried about are the ones that are on the water. None of them are in the WUI. So nothing's like in Madrone or New Fire. So, you know, working on MWPA and, you know, we actually discussed the insurance waivers today at, you know, Marin Wildfire Prevention Agency. I, I don't think we have an insurance problem here, but, you know, that's the Larkspur Plaza stuff and the stuff, you know, that's right on the water. That might be a different story, you know, for what's in the floodplain. So, so um, 
but anyway, I, I you know, I, but, you know, just yeah, I, I don't want to belabor that point, but but the insurance company, you know, I had the experience myself with Allstate. They just take a look at the, they take a look at area codes and they 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 look at Google mm -hmm. Maps and say, you know, let's let's erase this, and they don't they don't they don't give a you know a rat's behind whether it's in the movie or not. They they feel like, hey, we want to reduce our exposure to Larkspur. We're going to find a way to reduce our you know our uh, our exposure to Larkspur, even after they make stuff up. Um, you know, they contended that we had brush on the property. There's no brush on my property, stuff like that. Contending, well, you don't have an earthquake valve. Yeah, we do have an earthquake valve. I mean, it, you know, and this happens time and time and time again. Um, so it's just like, well, what kind of protections can we give to, you know, to homeowners, to even to, you know, developers who are considering that this is not going to happen to their properties? Yeah, that's a really good point. Because you know, will we or no will we, you know, they're looking they're looking at zip codes in the map. Yeah, yeah. If I may, just getting back to the idea of um of sharing comments, if if the city attorney uh, sees this as a Brown Act violation, uh and and that the comments would come directly to us instead, uh via Elise, then um what would we think about maybe sharing all of the uh, steering committee's comments as an attachment in preparation for that December 8th meeting so that so that folks who who sort of want to get into the weeds and understand where your perspectives are prior to the meeting they they could have access to that that way the the meeting itself is is launched from that point so so in other words you're saying that we should not be posting comments you know, you know directly we should send them to you or to release and then you'll you'll compile them is that the idea well, that's that's one idea. What do you think, Elise? That's less likely yeah, to be a Brown Act we were, violation, we were, right? If we were to collect them and not share them, and or you share them at a public meeting, that would be more appropriate. Um, so even even though this is actually a public document at this point, if we're, we're not it's here. it's just if everyone's commenting on that website, where I have a concern. So you, right. we don't want people to. It's it can't be like a conversation on that website without, um, which is public, but. We just need to fight. We need to make sure that it's okay. Okay. So Elise and Andy, this this is a posted Brown Act meeting, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, anything I said here, you know, what would the difference be? Right. And we've had some city attorneys say that that they they see the, uh, the our public websites as an extension of a public meeting, but but not all city attorney, it's a bit of a gray area. So and some of the council, on. maybe even not between this committee, but if the council, other council members are discussing or making comments to your comments or the planning commissioners are making comments to comments that can be an issue. Okay, oh, fair enough. I mean, let, let's just make it simple. I'm gonna send them to you. And Andy, what you said sounds fine to me. I mean, I, I just, I, I'm kind of, thinking the, you know, the novelist or the journalist and me, you know, what, what's going to actually get people to, you know, read beyond the first page of the book. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, at least can, I, can, can I ask what the, what the schedule is into, into January for this committee? So we, we don't have any, we don't have any meetings scheduled in January now. And I think, um, we oh, but we wanted to talk about the objective design. We wanted the objective design and development standards to come back in January with some examples. So, um, but that's actually not part of this document. The actual no, that's the objective design development standards. Yeah. So for the housing element, once um, once that thirty days is up, there'll be a period where we're responding to comments, and then um, that probably will it, that will be will go away for a while. <laughs> that's it, yes. right. Andy, I think we'll probably take more than 10 days, especially given the holiday um, that we're timing. Yeah, the timing. So it, it'll be, I would guess, mid-January, probably before we come back with that revised document. Okay. Uh, well, for the for the odd stuff, it would be more appropriate if somebody from the current planning commission were to replace me um, since I'm no longer a planning commissioner. Well, we'll miss you. We're all okay been... with it. You've been such a great planning yeah. commissioner. <laughs> but, but, you know, it's the only time I get to see you anymore, Daniel. Well, I walk a dog by your house. Oh, true, true. <laughs> You're not there. 
we can talk more, but we still appreciate your contribution. I do appreciate that. And it's going to now it's that we, we just saw one draft and that, you know, it's going to get close to the end now, I think, for that document, hopefully. Good. Good. All right. All okay, right. I'm going to I'm going to sign off. Um, Thank you. It's my um, tie time. So if since no one wanted to um, comment from the public, the only last item is to adjourn the meeting. So if um, you're all fine with adjourning, we could just close the meeting. Yeah, can you just check one more time for public comment? I, I'd love to sure. see. We have if two. anyone wants to comment, please, please raise your hand. There's no raised hands. OK. Great. Well, Andy and 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 Elise, I yeah, I like I said, I thought this was a you know really uh, a good summary of a lot of stuff and you know a lot to think about. So I, I you know want to thank you guys again for you know doing this and and um, yeah, I look forward to more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all your good contributions. Good night, everyone. Good night. I move to adjourn. <laughs> all right. And thank you. and I would thank Andy. He's the one that did the work. It wasn't me. Oh, it's my team. I, I can't take credit for it all. It's Thanks, an incredible Andy. team. And and okay. Elise did a lot. I she's the most interactive person we're working with on any of our teams. She's just that's, amazing. That's not amazing. a negative comment. It's a positive <laughs> comment. Absolutely. We're gonna get across that finish line. Our yeah. We're yeah. hoping. Okay. Good night, everyone. Yes. All right. Good, Good night. night. Good night everyone.